Hello dear students. So in today's uh, class, so let us discuss about the nuclear fission reactions. So when the uranium is bombarded, that is the uranium 235 is bombarded with the neutrons. So the nucleus of the uranium will break. So, the breaking up of the nucleus is called as the nuclear fission. Okay. So, the phenomenon of breaking of the nucleus, it is called as the nuclear fission. So, here you can see when the uranium-235 isotope is bombarded with the neutron. So, depending on how the uranium nucleus splits. Okay. So, we have these different uh, products. So, that is, so when the uranium is bombarded with the neutron, so it can form barium and krypton by emitting the two, the three neutrons or it can form iodine and yttrium by the emission of three neutrons or the uranium can form the cesium or rubidium by emitting two neutrons okay so the nuclear fission means when the unstable nucleus is bombarded with the high energy particles so the nucleus of the unstable uh, radioactive element will break down to form the new element so that phenomenon is known as the nuclear fission reaction so let us discuss about the nuclear reactors so a nuclear reactor is a device so in which the nuclear fusion chain reactions occur in a controlled manner for the generation of electrical energy so a nuclear reactor can also be used for the production of isotopes for the research so the principal components of a nuclear reactor are the nuclear fuel moderator control rods and the coolant so let us see what are the nuclear fuels that can be used in the nuclear reactor so the elemental uranium or the natural uranium so that is uranium 99.3 percent uranium plus 0 0.7 percent the 235 uranium isotope or enriched uranium so that means uranium containing 2 to 3 percent of uranium 235 isotope its oxide carbide or an alloy can be used as the nuclear fuel so <coughs> or the plutonium 239 and uranium okay so which are produced in the following nuclear reactions are also used as the nuclear fuels. So, the fuel is encased by a cylindrical tubes, so made up of zirconium alloy to prevent the release of the fission products into the coolant system. So, next let us see one more important component of the nuclear reactor is the moderator so the neutrons released in a fission reaction have a very high kinetic energies so the speed of these neutrons has to be reduced because only the thermal neutrons are effective in inducing a fission reaction so the neutrons released in the fission of uranium 235 are more readily absorbed by uranium 238 than by the residual uranium 235 so when the neutrons are slowed down by a moderator so they are more readily absorbed by the uranium 235 thus the sustaining the chain reaction although this uh, nucleus is present
present in a small amount so about 0.7 percent okay so the function of the moderator is to slow down the speed of the neutrons as to get the effectively effective collisions so the moderator okay so only reduces the speed of the neutrons and does not absorb them okay so the substances like graphite heavy water okay and light water are commonly used as the moderators so the next important component of a nuclear reactor is the control rods so for a slow and uh, a continuous chain reaction so it is necessary to release only one neutron for every neutron absorbed so the excess neutrons released during the fission reaction are absorbed using the control rods so which are made up of materials with high neutron absorption cross section such as the boron okay so the boron in the form of a boron carbide is used as the control rods okay so control rods are used to absorb the excess neutrons or you can use the uh, silver cadmium alloy as the control rods so the assembly of nuclear fuel and the control rods is called as the reactor core so by varying the depth of the control rods within the reactor core so it is possible to increase or decrease the absorption of the neutrons so the one more important component of the nuclear reactor is the coolant so the heat released in the fission reaction is absorbed using a suitable coolant a coolant should have a good thermal capacity to absorb the heat it should be having the compatibility with the fuel and other parts of the nuclear reactor and finally so the coolant should have the low neutron absorption cross section so generally generally the gases such as the carbon dioxide and helium and the liquids such as light water and heavy water are used as the coolants so in reactors which operates at high temperatures and without a moderator liquid sodium is used as the coolant okay so the some of the nuclear reactors operates without a moderator so in such nuclear reactors so the liquid sodium is used as the coolant so the hot coolant is circulated to a heat exchanger where the heat is used to produce the steam to run a turbine and generate the electricity okay so the reactor is in a concrete shell structure to regulate to regulate the leakage of radioactive waste products so here you can observe a typical nuclear reactor so here you can observe the nuclear reactor so the control rods so this is the nuclear core okay so this is the condenser so generator so these are the this is an example of the light water reactor okay so let us discuss about the types of nuclear reactors so the nuclear reactors can be broadly classified into thermal and breeder reactors so the thermal reactors are further subdivided into gas cooled and water cooled thermal reactors 
so the various type the types of the reactors so the gas cooled reactor so this gas cooled reactor uses natural uranium metal encased in the magnox so that is it's an alloy of magnesium as the fuel graphite is the moderator and gaseous carbon dioxide is the coolant so next type of the nuclear reactor is advanced gas cooled reactor so this agcr uses uranium dioxide containing 1.3 to 2.3% of uranium 235 pellets as the fuel clad in the stainless steel tubes so the moderator is the graphite and the coolant is the gaseous carbon dioxide so next one is the high temperature gas cooled reactor so this reactor uses the uranium thorium carbide or uranium thorbide uh, thorium oxide coated with the layers of graphite and silicon carbide as the fuel the moderator and the coolant are the graphite and the helium respectively so next one is the boiling water reactor so this uses uranium dioxide containing 1.5 to 3% of uranium 235 clad in a zircalloy zircalloy that is zirconium alloy tubes as the fuel so water serves both as the moderator and the coolant so next one pressurized water reactor so this reactor uses the same fuel and the cladding material as the bwr so that is boiling water reactor so water under a pressure of 145 atmosphere is used as the moderator and coolant so the next one is the pressurized heavy water reactor so this pressurized heavy water reactor uses the natural uranium dioxide clad in the zirconium as the fuel here the heavy water is used as both the moderator and the coolant so the next type of reactor is the light water cooled graphite moderator reactor so this reactor uses uh, uranium dioxide as the containing uh, 1.5 to 2% of uranium 235 clad in a zirconium tube graphite is the moderator and the ordinary water is used as the coolant so the next important uh, the nuclear reactor is the fast breeder reactor so this fast breeder reactor is designed to generate more fissionable material than it consumes so in this type of reactor the fuel is mixed mixed oxide of uranium and the plutonium containing 25% of the plutonium oxide and the fast neutrons are used to induce the fission chain so the advantage of fast neutrons is that they enable an efficient conversion of uranium 238 to plutonium 239 so since the fast neutrons are involved no moderator is required and the fuel is clad in the stainless steel tubes and the liquid sodium is the coolant 